What do you say? I I, I need the comment again. I, I need the comment. I don't care about the so, open. Give so me the we're, comment. We're recording the preview episode immediately after the um I gotta pull it. We immediately after we just did our quick reaction to the Travis Hunter news. Uh it's the video itself has been, I think this is gonna get gonna get posted tonight. The video itself has been up for I don't know, maybe like three minutes, and then Colin comes in swinging and he comments what did he comment he comments this ain't no emergency shut your over enthusiastic mouth <laughs> with a laughing emoji there was a la there was a laughing emoji you can see that i'm so livid at that <laughs> nope <laughs> are you not upset about that well i know colin means no harm and he's just oh. trying to bother us how about you don't bother He's us? He's trying on, to get a rise few, out of you. Well, he got it. On, on one of our few shows where it's an actual emergency, and we're actually talking something pretty important, all the rest of this right. drivel doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares about week 10 of the FCS season? Not me. But when the number one recruit in the nation goes to an FCS school over Georgia, then yeah, maybe we're, we're looking for, I don't know, not you're too enthusiastic. If he went to Delaware, I think it would be an emergency in his eyes. I think he was lying about being a best man in his friend's wedding. You think he was lying? I think he attended. Oh, oh! so you're thinking that he was doing it for clout? I think he's saying, I'm the best man for clout. Oh. Yes. Everyone's lost already in the first minute and 40 seconds. Suck no one has Colin. any idea what we're talking about. This is the Believe in FCS Football Podcast, part of the Believe Podcast Network. If you missed the quick reaction video, it's only going to be in video format, I, I think is what we're going to do. Um, so make sure you go check that out. It is on the YouTube channel, NFL Prospects Pod and FCS Football Pod. YouTube channel is the name of it. I'm going to end up renaming that soon. Uh, I'm Joe DeLeon, joined by my former teammate. What are you going to rename roommate. it? Hack City? Actually, that's pretty good. Hack Media? Why Why not Hack City? Actually, I don't mind Hack, Hack City. I Because I've, I've been racking my brain trying to think of a good name for the, the YouTube channel because... It's confusing that it's NFL Prospects Pod plus FCS Football Pod, and the logo is the NFL Prospects Pod logo. I just haven't come up with a good enough name where I'm like, I want it. I kind of like Hack City. I think Hack I might City. roll with that. I think I might well, roll don't with you that. Have to, don't you have to consult Mr. Ryan Roberts? No, it's because it's my YouTube channel. Oh, okay. it's my, it's my. I like Hack City. It's my, because like I'm, I'm planning on putting out separate content that's not related to both pods like i want to do oh. like reaction stuff kind of like two, what we just more did 2k stuff no i'm not doing that anymore that's what the channel originally used to be it oh was uh Are those videos off of it no i took them off that, thank you I, I some of those videos got a lot of views it was me doing playing mad and i got a couple ones that had like fifteen thousand views i was uh -huh. getting some pretty good uh some pretty good run yeah. i had a couple people when i start when i stopped playing stopped doing the doing madden videos i had people DM me on Xbox. I had like five or so D people DM me on Xbox asking me why I stopped making videos. I was big. I time. don't know. We were too busy playing Risk. <laughs> That's actually pretty true. That was a weird <laughs> time, man. Was that pandemic time? Yeah, that was pandemic time. I miss Risk. Well, you, can... I, you're the worst player at Risk ever. I'm bad at a lot of things, um, which I don't think should surprise anybody. Today, folks, we're going to be previewing the semifinal games between North Dakota State and James Madison, as well as Montana State, South Dakota State. A uh, lot to cover as we're down to four teams. It's about to be two, and we're going to know who will be competing in the national championship for the FCS uh, by the end of the day on Saturday. Before we get to that, though, Sean, can you uh, speak to our listeners about the um, whatnots of gambling and using bet online? Oh, Joseph, I would love to because since Monday, I think we did the last show. I'm still on the heater, people. Still on the oh. heater. Monday night bet hit, smashed. It was scary. It was a sweat show. It was very, very sweaty. Last night, Joe, three team NBA parlay. You know, I had Brooklyn winning, I had uh, Phoenix winning, and I had uh, uh, Golden State winning. All three, put them together. Why not? Two of those games went to overtime. I'm sitting there. I, maybe I was at work. Uh, but I was sitting there watching the games. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweat show because Phoenix went to overtime. Brooklyn went to overtime. And I'm like, there's no way these teams are going to lose. They can't lose. This is going to be this is going to be uh, t terrifying if they lose. I, I, I'll lose my heater. Still on it, everybody. You know how you can get on a heater? Go to betonline.ag. 
head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign in today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code believe 50 B L E A V five zero to receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season, or at least the remainder of it. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts. So after you go on a, a heater like Sean has, and you got a little bit of extra spending money in the holidays, don't treat yourself. Treat your lady and get her some nice diamonds. And if you're going to do that, go to Lightbox Jewelry. Say goodbye to dull gifts. Lightbox lab-grown diamonds are the brightest gift of the year using cutting-edge technology and innovative techniques. They've cracked the science of sparkle, creating the highest quality lab-grown diamonds you can find at a light price. $800 per carat. They have the same chemical makeup of natural diamonds, but just are grown in a lab. Because of their process, they can create stones in blush pink, beautiful blue, as well as classic white. Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds are the gift they'll never want to take off priced, so they won't have to. They really do make any outfit sparkle. Visit lightboxjewelry.com to add sparkle to your holiday shopping. That's lightboxjewelry.com. Lightbox Diamond. Di Damn it. Diamonds. Oh, there never we go. I had it. Out of way. I mean, really. It's like running all the way down the court after getting a steal and then just boofing the layup. That's boofing. Uh, yeah, boofed it. Boofing means different words here. I mean, boofing. Yeah, it, could be, it could mean You're a boof. F effing up. <laughs> What'd you say? Light Dom? Dom box? What'd you say? <laughs> Dom box or something like that. <laughs> what happened? Your brother texted you? No, I just I just had a brain fart. Oh God, uh, that, that makes me happy. <sighs> okay, well I'm happy, Sean, that we've got. Let's just end the show there. Let's just end the show after seven minutes. No FCS talk, just berating Colin, and then me making a uh, a stupid verbal mess up. Uh, Sean, we've got two great games this weekend that I would uh, like to talk about. So we have North Dakota State James Madison, which is going to be played. 6.15 p.m. Pacific time, 9.15 Eastern time on Friday. And then we have a uh, matchup between Montana State and South Dakota State, 11 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, which is 2 p.m. Eastern time. I believe they're both being played on ESPN2. So, Sean, hitting on North Dakota State first. Um, I would like to, to dive into this one. There's a lot of implications here. It is a rematch of the back-to-back -back national championship games. Um, what are your thoughts initially for this one? My thoughts are initially, or I I should have bought a desk for this house because it's too short. What, do you, I, what is everything on top of right now? A, a drawer? Or no, or it a, is a desk, but it's my buddy's desk, so it's too small for me. Oh, coughing fit. Oh, shut up. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm just trying to get adjusted uh, to sit here, and it's like I'm in a, a, a toddler's seat. Um, look. North Dakota State JMU is going to be – it's what we've been seeing for the last five years in FCS football when they play each other. It's a slugfest. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes down to the fourth quarter, and this time maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little. It looks like JMU might have a quarterback that can do it. I know they won a national championship against North uh, North Dakota State, but that it's game, it was, it, it was defense and it was run game and it was all that. I think they really might have a quarterback here in Cole Johnson. I think that he could really lead the way. And what does that mean for North Dakota State? Is Cam Miller going to outduel him? That's a tough. That's a tall task. And again, I might be drinking it. I might be. I might be buying in too much because we kind of know how the situation is with JMU. They're just a little bit faster, a little bit bigger, and that gives them a bit of an advantage. But he's been executing enough in the last five, six games where you're like, oh, everyone else might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, the, the thing is with me here, and we typically had in these matchups when North Dakota State was so dominant, they had a quarterback who was leading the way, an Easton Stick, a Carson Wentz, a Trey Lance, and I think Cam Miller's good. Zeb Noland. <clears throat> Garbage. Well, oh. he, was the, he was the one who ended that streak. Um, 
Still sucks. I still can't believe they put him in. No, because it's it's hilarity that South Carolina put freaking Zeb Nolan in and they sucked. And then they put Spencer Brown in and they suddenly started playing well. Gee, shocker. Who would have told you that that was going to happen? Well, Spencer's um, out now. Yeah, uh, uh, Brown. He, he's... Um, He's not oh, wait, no, be... I didn't say I meant it's not Spencer Brown. Jason um, Brown. Jason no, Brown. Wait. Jason is that, Brown. Spencer is that the Brown's host of the, the Slapdick the... podcast. Jason Brown is also the same name as the host of the Slapdick podcast. Okay. I'm Spencer here Brown is the you and I offensive lineman. Ah, yes. I'd love to see him in a in a shotgun formation. Yeah, uh Jason Brown has entered the transfer portal because of the Spencer Rattler news, which is probably in his in his best interest to do that. Yeah. Uh even if Rattler sucks, they're still gonna start him. Um mm, if. Well, he does suck. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Besides the point, we have a situation here where Cam Miller is a quality starting quarterback. He's a good athlete. He's a good runner. Uh, we know that he provides serious value in the running game for a team that has so many different rushing off options. But the other thing that we are familiar with in their one loss this season is that if you force him to throw the football, which is easier said than done, but if you have the right defensive pieces – You can certainly do it. And if you have a good defensive line like James Madison does have, you can force Cam Miller to beat you with his arm. And as good as Cam Miller is and as good as he's been so far since stepping in this season midway through to start, I still do not trust him in those circumstances. That does not mean that Cam Miller down the road can't turn into a good starting quarterback that can beat teams with his arm. But the kid is too young, in my opinion. And I think in a matchup like this, it is going to be too difficult. These are very evenly built teams in a lot of aspects, but where you have the clear disadvantage is the quarterback position where Cole Johnson has the experience. He has the edge. He has the ability to take over a game if he really needs to. That for me is going to be a key piece to this. Age doesn't mean as much to me, Joe. Uh, it's experience, which oh, another coughing fit. It's experience. You need to point out every. I mute myself so we don't need to know. Well, well, yeah, the video watchers they get to see you, you know, hacking one up. But the audio listeners, this is for you guys. Whenever Joe has to mute his mic, um, to have what do you got? Uh, asthma. I don't have asthma. What the whatever you got that's got fuck? you coughing. You got the whooping cough, bronchitis. Probably whooping cough again, like I had junior year. Jeez, um, God, I remember that. That was awful. Um, cough for three months. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Now you're bringing it back. I just remember being in. Co- <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, Joe, I'll talk to you later. And I just would have to hang up. Um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, experience versus age. I don't uh-huh. know. The Montana State quarterback's freshman. He's been balling out. So, so, what do you mean? So, so what? You just said that Cam Miller's age might might have a, a difference about it. Yeah, and I, I, I'm picking against Montana State for the same exact reason that I'm oh picking boy. against North Dakota State. I, I, but how can they make it this far without Look, you acknowledging that, a, that, that that they're stepping up for their age and, and experience level? Wait, say that again? How can you – so you're, you're not going to acknowledge that they've made it this far into the FCS football playoffs – I am acknowledging age. it. I am acknowledging it. it but sound we, like we, it. we have proof. We have a a we literally got to see it in person. Proof that a good defense can force Cam Miller to have to do a lot more than he's capable of doing. He is a great athlete. He is a great runner. And if they get into that rhythm where they're toting the rock with multiple guys and he's doing really, really well running the football, it's going to be a different story. But if it is that situation like we saw against South Dakota State where he's running around and he's holding the ball too long and he doesn't know where to put the football, things like that are going to hold back North Dakota State. And if James Madison can do it, which I firmly believe they have the defensive players and the playmakers like Mike Green on the defensive line to force him into those situations and force him into third and medium and long, that is why I'm saying that I'm picking against North Dakota State. Not because he's not, uh, I'm not saying what he's done is, is fantastic and he's played great this year, but more so he's not at the level as a passer to take over and make those plays in those third long situations. Are you sure you're not just carrying over bias from a couple of the North Dakota State fans we met while we were in Brookings? No, no, because it was the one jackass that everyone else was very nice to us. There was that one jackass that had the cheap shoes that was sitting behind us. Yeah, he was giving our boys uh, problems. Yeah. We almost said we almost stepped in, but we were too hungover to do anything. Well, I I said, hey, I had to put on my my. Don't get caught at at a, at a college football game, 
getting in a in a in a kerfuffle <laughs> with somebody you don't know. <laughs> I had to I had to put myself in the I, I hate to say it public figure hat and say yeah, let's just sit down. You know, yeah. C- could you imagine that we we get back to our respective homes and we see on social media. Craig um, Haley's tweeting about it. I'm sitting here like, oh, Craig, no. Like, I'm still <laughs> trying to earn your respect. <laughs> There's a video of you just blasting some <laughs> some North Dakota State dude in the head. <laughs> oh. Like, we didn't, we don't need that. But North you're, Dakota you're... State fans are great. They're great, except for that one guy. A lot of run for the for the last North Dakota State tailgate. A buddy that fell off the uh, the skateboard, holding the flag. I think Joy Joy Taylor retweeted it. Oh, I I, I actually I know what you're talking about. The that, shirtless uh, fella. You... Yeah, someone had a big tweet about it and say this is awesome or this is funny, whatever. Final um, thoughts though on the on this. I'm gonna have to go JMU. I am. Uh, I'm openly saying I'm. I'm. I'm kind of bought into Cole Johnson, and I think Antoine Wells is an exceptional receiver. So, I I got to stick with him. I, I have to pick them. I don't. It, it just seems like common sense. And sure, it's North Dakota State, but it's not that North Dakota State. If that makes any sense at all. Yes, it makes perfect sense. It is still North Dakota State, but it is not the same North Dakota State that we've seen go on these playoff runs. I'm glad you can understand my double talk. Nobody else can. Uh, Maybe they do. Uh, This other matchup, though, the one that's being played on Saturday, very weird time slots for these games. Very strange. Um, Middle of the day game, Montana State, South Dakota State. South Dakota State being the unseeded underdog, which I don't even consider them. I, to I don't be even an consider them that either. I, I'm tired of hearing uh, unseeded. That that that's not a narrative you guys should be running on. And I I actually don't even see the South Dakota State people pushing no. it because they know yeah, because because they know that it was just a crazy ass hail mary, and then that's why they're not. So I'm not even considering them that uh, as such. There are rubes out there that would say, oh oh look at them they they're really upsetting the whole FCS. They're setting them on fire. No no they're. They were one of the best teams all year. They were in the top five for like three weeks of the season. They're they're not like an unseated team. Okay, this isn't our Kennesaw chaos that we were rooting for. By the way, I have to acknowledge the thing that I tweeted this week. Uh, Troy Anderson oh, got an invite to the Senior Bowl. Um, Rightfully he's, so. He's going to be going to the Senior Bowl. But I don't know how, and this was before we started covering the FCS. I saw it too. I, I didn't know that he was a quarterback, and he rushed for 1,400 yards. He's, he's like top five in school history in rushing yards. The dude can freaking move. Who is he, Jim Kelly? Apparently. I think he's Jim. That's the Jim Kelly story. He was a, Actually, it's the reverse Jim Kelly story. Oh, Joe just had to mute his mic again. The Thanks. Call. Was um, Jim Kelly a linebacker? A linebacker that converted the quarterback. I think he ran to pick up a ball, and he slung it back like on a rope, and then he kind of worked his way back up there. Like, I'm pretty sure he was a linebacker that became a quarterback. I'm going to look that up after the show. But no, we see that happen from time to time where these guys transition to linebacker, but we don't see them at this level where he's getting like huge NFL awareness. He, his name's starting to really trend up in terms of draft prospect uh, he's level. An, he's an athlete, man. It's a monster. I saw that uh, because uh, Isaiah Afonzi broke the uh, Afonze. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say Afonzi because I, I, every everybody types out the pronunciation, um, and that's okay. I can't read. Mm-hmm. That's not how I'm able to pronounce a name. Like Tommy uh, Mellet. Malat. Malat. Yeah, I, I'm not going to get that right. And it is just because I've seen it typed out different ways that I have to reset to my default. Okay. Um, but Afonze broke the, uh, the the single season rushing yards. I saw Troy Anderson on there. Yeah, what, that, that was why it? I looked is it up. I was like, like different Troy Anderson? Yeah, I was like, is this a different guy? I looked it up like and then Kurt, I'm like, it's like a Kurt Warner situation no with this C. <laughs> <laughs> Or Adrian Peterson with the with the Georgia Southern uh, right. Adrian Peterson. Um, remember when there were two and, Steve Smiths in the NFL? Yeah, I remember that too. One of them was not very good and was good for like a very talking? brief period. Uh, that one of the Giants fine. sucked. Um, you are this so game, spoiled, bro. Oh, yeah. What are you What are uh, you talking about? You had you had uh, Akeem Akeem Nix, Hakeem Hakeem Nix before he. Uh, faded out you had mario manningham before he faded out prime victor cruz odell beckham jr amani Toomer, uh and then steve smith the other steve smith You're the so best spoiled. he only had one good year he had 1200 yards one Pretty season good. and that that was it he's the the uh what is it? he's the miles austin for the for the giants he's from anchorage arkansas 
Sean, let's get back on track here. Um, why would Montana we? Montana State, South. Yeah, right. Why would we? North Dakota State, South Dakota State. Giants wide receivers is the only thing I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on the game? Um, this is, as you see in my notes, I am currently undecided. I am currently the undecided voter. Are you um, going to pick? I will pick. Okay. But I need to either talk myself into one of them or have you talk me into one of them because whatever okay. you pick, I'm going to pick the opposite, basically. Um, Fair. It's two teams that can run the rock exceptionally. Um, they both play uh, – Montana State plays exceptional run defense. South Dakota State plays good run defense. Um and then you're looking at it, you're like, okay, maybe South Dakota State has the leg up in running back talent with Davis over Afonzi, but just a little bit. So you look at these parallels, it's like an A grade and a B grade for both in both those categories. And you're looking at it like, so where does the edge take place? And that's probably going to be South Dakota State having Oladokun, who can actually throw the ball. Uh, and if uh, Melot uh, can sling it a little bit, I we've seen him rush the ball, and we know he can he can run it. Um it's. I think right now I'm leaning towards South Dakota State strictly because of Oladokun and his leadership and his arm talent uh, to make a, a big play when he needs to. I think mm. that's where I'm currently leaning. I'm leaning heavily towards South Dakota State. And mm. Interestingly enough, I'm thinking about this now. Th- they are having a serious impact on my decision-making for picks this week because of what I just talked about, what they did against Cam Miller, is I think there's a parallel between them and James Madison in terms of quality of defense. Now I'm doing the opposite here. Uh, I see what they did against Cam Miller, and I see the possibility to replicate it against Malat. I, I think that Malat is a fantastic runner, but the fact that he only had to throw the ball 11 times is a bit concerning in my eyes if I'm concerning. a Montana State fan. Because if, if they get in that situation where they play the run really well, and as they've been able to shut down some of these top-tier running backs, they did it against Covington, if they can shut down the uh, Afonze and keep him under 100 yards... And Malat's got to throw the ball in third and long. I don't know if I really trust him to do that. I don't have enough of a sample size to say I, that I trust him to do that. He hasn't done it enough. I agree. And he hasn't. That's I, how I you think, kill him. That's the, I think that with that South Dakota State, North Dakota away. State game, I think South Dakota State was playing off of crazy momentum off of that early, yeah. uh, the early game Pierre Strong Jr. run. I think that's what they were playing off of. And you get a team with momentum like that, and then you know you're going up against a Goliath and say he say Goliath just ruptured his hammy. You're like, okay. He's still Goliath, but we can get it. We can take him to the to the hoop to his right. You know, that's how we could. So you're like, okay, now we're playing with some momentum. I, I think that game was really momentum based in South Dakota. It certainly was. Um, but now that we have I, it depends on if Pierre Strong is is back from the concussion. I, I, I would hope that he is back and available. They still have Isaiah Davis. I think Ola Dokin is going to have an impact in this one because of the disparity in experience and also quarterback quality in terms of ability to just throw the ball like I, i'm still in awe of that throw that he had where he he hit um i forget who it was um he hit him over the middle with like oh, uh, yeah, against yeah, Villanova. Yeah. I, I, who's yeah. the one uh he mentioned the twins he mentioned who are the twins receivers i'm, bl- I'm gonna look it up in a second because it's bugged the crap out of me but that throw to me was like it put me in awe i'm like wow oladokin really does have a pretty good arm for an fcs quarterback so like that to me, all those all those aspects, they're going to be able to run the ball depending on who's toting the rock. That for me, and the ability to possibly shut down a lot is is a big reason why I'm riding with South Dakota State. Who is this? Why you're you're now you got me doing it right now. Uh, I'm looking um, it up. I'm looking it up. No, I'm looking it up. Sort by jersey. No, it's it's Position. even easier than that. Janky. That's right. Jackson Janky. You're Janky. Yeah, pretty much. Uh. Any any counterpoints to what I just uh, dished out? Did I turn heel against South Dakota State last week or the week before? I think it was last week versus Villanova. Yeah, you picked Villanova because you're an idiot. Mm. Well, when you say something like that, it makes you want to stick as a heel. Even though I think I've talked myself into South Dakota State enough. I think I'm going to st- I think as much fun as it is to be a heel against South Dakota State and the Jackrabbits. I can't do it this week. Uh, South Dakota State wins. I think they win it. All right, there we go. Like a 17-14 gross game. It's going to be a gross game. It's going to be an ugly game. Good. I want ugly. I want it as ugly as possible. Mm. Um, Sean, any closing thoughts? That's all we have for talking about these two games. 
no. Uh, go to the YouTube channel. Check out all of the other videos that we've done. We just did a uh, a pretty big video about the um, Travis Hunter. The big time, yep, big time transfer uh, to Jackson State. Not and transfer, then uh, commitment. A commitment. Hey, Jackass. Why don't you let me get through it? Well, you said the wrong thing, so I. I don't to- have closing thoughts, and I'm trying to do a little bit of housekeeping, which is your job. Normally, it's just housekeeping. Follow, subscribe at Joe Julio, at Sanderson Thank Radio, you. at Believe Podcast. Five star review. Subscribe. Drive safe.